Zoom, Skype, FaceTime, regardless of the virtual medium, the new normal has created the opportunity or terrifying reality for you to speak on camera to your audience. But how can you calm your nerves, capture their attention, and keep them engaged? In this video, you will get seven key speaker tips to help you present like a pro at your next virtual meeting. I'm Riaz Megji, founder of the Every Conversation Counts platform and 17 year broadcaster for videos on connecting deeper, asking powerful questions and becoming a captivating storyteller on every stage. Subscribe to this channel and hit the bell so you get the heads up on the latest videos that will help you make every conversation count. Now recently, the two words I've been hearing, Zoom fatigue. I think we're all missing that in-person face-to-face interaction as we adjust to the reality of operating in the presence of each other's absence. When you are given the opportunity to speak though, and this could be in a more formal meeting or a keynote presentation, whether it's in person or in the virtual space, the fundamentals of speaking stay the same. All effective communication that drives connection is one-to-one. If you're presenting through video, think of one viewer. If you're a writer, think of one reader, and a podcaster, think of one listener. The next time you are asked to present at a virtual meeting, these seven key speaker tips will help you captivate your audience. First things first, engage them early. And that involves planning beforehand. What are the priorities for your audience? Is it scheduling? Is it future projects? Is it job security? Find out what they want and then structure content that is meaningful to them. When it comes to meeting time, Make sure you arrive early so you can connect with people as they pop up into the meeting. This extra five to 10 minutes could help you check in with people. Are they overwhelmed with Zoom meetings, home responsibilities, managing their own range of emotions? This is your chance to show them that you care and at the same time, this exercise will help put you at ease. When things get going, out of the gate, use a poll question. Maybe use the chat function, asking people where they're coming from, What do they hope to get out of this meeting? Do they know what day it is today? But refer to them by their name because their name is the most important word in your conversation and when it comes to the virtual medium, we need these triggers to stay connected. There's gonna be a lot going on. Explain what you're doing. If you're looking down, if you're reading questions, if you're sharing your screen, it is easy to look distracted in the virtual medium. So make sure you're describing your actions and this will help establish purpose and intent. Number two, level up your lighting and sound. Good lighting and sound are key ways to make a strong impression. For this setup, I use a ring light and an external lav microphone like you see right here to help elevate the production for this content. Without those elements, as you can see in here, this video would have a completely different feel. Number three, start with story. I get this question a lot. When you start your presentation, should you ask a question off the top? Should you share a shocking statistic? I suggest start with story. Make them feel something real right off the top. You want to hook them with an emotional roller coaster ride because the more real that you can be, the more real the experience will feel for your audience. Now you might be wondering, well, what story do you tell? Well, think about the questions the people in your audience are asking themselves. Right now, they might be asking, well, what am I going to do now? What's the first thing I'm going to do when isolation is over? How will I reinvent? You want to build your narrative around their priorities, not yours. Fourth point, bypass the bystander effect. We've all been there. Diffusion of responsibility is a psychological phenomenon in which people are less likely to take action when in the presence of a large group of strangers. So picture this. You're the speaker, you're in a Zoom chat, and you deliver a powerful story followed by a powerful question, and then crickets. People are waiting for someone else to jump in. So if you're the speaker and you have good relationships with some of your attendees, call on them by name to help avoid some of that dead air or have a few backup questions to ask to trigger some thoughts and ideas from your group so you can help bypass that bystander effect. In a virtual setting, the goal is consistent engagement throughout. A popular technique for adaptive learning, the think, pair, share technique. Throw out the question, Give the audience some time to think about it, then get your group to pair up in breakout rooms and have them share their thoughts. After, get them to report back in your main room. 
These engagement triggers are vital with virtual presentations. Try and hit them every seven to 10 minutes because the more actively involved the audience is, the more they will listen and take action after the presentation is over. Number six, consistency cultivates trust. It is so much harder to read people's cues and understand their personality through the screen. Consistency is really key for how you come across when trying to build that trust. If you're the joker, cracking one-liners in emails and then present with a serious tone and deadpan delivery, people will wonder who the real person is. So do yourself a favor. Whatever your vibe is, humor, edge, warmth, keep it consistent and help build that trust. Final point, practice, record, repeat. Being on camera could be a whole new experience for you and at first it can really feel overwhelming. You might be asking yourself, well, how do I look? Is that what I really sound like? Did I smile enough? You know, when I first got into the television business almost 20 years ago, I asked a seasoned host and reporter, how long did it take you to get comfortable being in front of the camera? And he'd been in the business maybe over 15 years. He paused and he said, I'm still figuring this out. And that always stuck with me because throughout my entire television career, I would actually watch the playback after every show and every interview to review how I presented and more importantly, how I could improve. I look at pace, posture, microfacial expressions, uh, fully recognizing that, you know what, it all gets better with practice. So record yourself on camera, review it, ask someone you trust for feedback, and then repeat the process. Repetition will help you gain confidence in front of the camera and help you improve for your future virtual presentations. Hope these tips were helpful. What has helped you shine when speaking at your virtual presentations? Definitely let me know in the comments below. For more tips on human connection, be sure to check out the free download, The Five Secrets to Making Every Conversation Count. You can get that guide at the link in the description below. Thanks for watching. Check out these videos for more ideas on how you can have better conversations and overcome conflict to help save your relationships. If you like this video, hit the like button, be sure to subscribe to the channel and share this with someone that you think might use it. We'll see you in the next video.